So, imagine this. You're living in the early 1900s, a time when Ford's Model T is fast becoming the best-selling car on the road. But you're not worried about that. You're on top of the world. Everyone loves you, and they consider you the father of the carriage empire in the country. Your fame and popularity lead you to partner up and build a car company, one that would soon go on to be the largest automobile empire in the world. You must be proud of yourself because in just a few years, your company would go on to acquire Cadillac, Buick, and Chevrolet and dominate car sales, bringing in record profits. The only problem is you're not part of the company anymore. Instead, you're left struggling during the economic crisis of the Great Depression while your former company is bringing in millions of dollars. But you weren't one to sit idly by. You embarked on a new venture, a bowling alley, and fast food restaurant in Flint, Michigan. You had a vision of family-friendly entertainment venues becoming a booming business, and you aimed to build a chain of 30 bowling alleys. You threw yourself into the business, even working in the kitchen yourself. However, you would later on find yourself working in a mine, which would result in you suffering a stroke that would leave you partially paralyzed. It was a cruel twist of fate for the man who had once been at the forefront of an automobile empire. This is the untold story of General Motors and its founder, William Crapo Durant. Born in Boston, Massachusetts on December 8, 1861, William Crapo Durant's early life was marked by a blend of privilege and adversity. He was the second child of William Clark Durant and Rebecca Folger Durant, both descendants of French heritage. Rebecca Folger's family held a prominent position in Massachusetts society, and her father, Henry H. Crapo, had ascended to the role of Michigan's governor. The family's French roots ran deep, and their heritage added a layer of distinction to young William's upbringing. However, destiny had a different path in store for William and his family. In 1869, when William was just eight years old, his father, William Clark Durant, made the heart-wrenching decision to leave his family. Rebecca, faced with the challenge of raising her children alone, made the decision to relocate to Flint, Michigan. It was in this thriving town that the Durant family would rebuild their lives. Flint, Michigan was an industrial hub where the sound of sawmills and the scent of fresh cut timber filled the air. William and his family moved in with Rebecca's sister, Rhoda, and her husband, Dr. James Wilson, for support during this trying period. As young William navigated his new surroundings, he found himself at crossroads in his education. The formalities of a traditional classroom no longer held his interest, and he made the bold decision to drop out of high school. Instead, he embarked on a journey that would lead him to discover his innate entrepreneurial spirit. The Durant Lumber Company, owned by his grandfather, welcomed him as an apprentice. Here, William was initiated into the craft of lumber, the industry that fueled Michigan's economy. The next step in William's unconventional path was a foray into cigar salesmanship. It was a humble beginning, but it provided him with the opportunity to develop essential sales and negotiation skills. These formative years as a cigar salesman would become a crucial building block for his future endeavors. The lure of entrepreneurship continued to beckon, and William would soon transition from selling cigars to founding his own carriage company. In 1886, William's life would take a momentous turn when he crossed paths with Josiah Dallas Dort. Together, they founded the Flint Road Car Company, armed with just $2,000 in startup capital. Little did they know that this modest investment would blossom into a multi-million dollar enterprise. Flint Road Cart Company wasn't an instant success, but Durant's unwavering determination and Dort's business acumen proved to be a winning combination. With sheer grit and innovation, they transformed their startup into a company with worldwide sales, a feat that seemed unimaginable at its inception. By the turn of the century, the Durant Dort Carriage Company had emerged as the largest manufacturer of horse-drawn vehicles in the United States. The name Durant had become synonymous with quality and innovation. However, while the world marveled at the horse-drawn vehicles produced by Durant and Dort, William Durant's gaze was fixed on the future. The world of automobiles was evolving, and Durant saw its potential even when others remained skeptical. 
He believed that these horseless carriages could transform not only transportation, but also the way people lived. It was a bold vision, and he was determined to make it a reality. The transition from cigar salesman to carriage manufacturer had been a remarkable journey, but the most extraordinary chapter of William C. Durant's life was about to unfold. Flint's streets were lined with wooden carts, horse-drawn carriages, and the occasional sight of a burgeoning innovation, the automobile. These early vehicles were a far cry from the sleek machines that would later dominate the roads, but they symbolized the future, a future that William Durant couldn't ignore. In 1890, William married Clara Pitt, his childhood sweetheart. Clara shared his dreams and stood by his side as he navigated the complexities of the automobile business. Together, they would face the challenges and triumphs that lay ahead. Durant's transformation from a carriage manufacturer to an automobile visionary was underway. He had become aware of the shortcomings of early automobiles, from their noisy engines to the smell of burnt fuel. Rather than wait for government regulations to address these issues, he saw an opportunity to take matters into his own hands. The year was 1900, and public outcry over the safety and regulation of gasoline-powered automobiles was mounting. Durant recognized the discontent among the public, and he believed that he could provide a solution. It was time to step into the realm of automobiles, and he was determined to do it in a way that would revolutionize the industry. To embark on this monumental endeavor, Durant set his sights on acquiring Buick, a local car company with modest sales and significant debts. This decision marked a pivotal moment in his life, one that would shape the future of the automotive world. Durant's vision extended beyond just building automobiles. He conceived a modern system of automobile dealer franchises. It was a revolutionary idea that would change the way cars were sold and serviced. This innovative approach would become a cornerstone of his future success. On November 1, 1904, he assumed control of the troubled Buick Motor Company. With the financial and manufacturing might of Durant Dort at his disposal, he set out to correct Buick's course and navigate it toward uncharted territory. Buick at that time was a company riddled with challenges and setbacks. It was a company on the brink of obscurity, struggling to find its footing in the rapidly evolving world of automobiles. But William Durant was not a man to be deterred by adversity. He thrived in the face of it. His vision for the company was clear. Buick would become a household name, a symbol of quality and innovation that would eclipse the achievements of its competitors. Durant's formidable marketing prowess was unleashed upon the Buick name, and the results were nothing short of spectacular. Under his guidance, Buick quickly ascended to become the best-selling automobile in America. It outperformed earlier giants of the industry, including the Ford Motor Company, Cadillac, and Oldsmobile. The 1905 New York Automobile Show served as the stage for Buick's triumphant debut. Despite having no manufacturing line in place and only a handful of existing cars, orders for Buick vehicles poured in, tallying over 1,100. Durant's charismatic push for the Buick brand had captured the imagination of the American public, and they wanted to be a part of this automotive revolution. However, Durant's ambitions extended beyond the borders of the United States. In Samuel McLaughlin, he found a kindred spirit and a strategic ally. Samuel McLaughlin, whose family operated the largest carriage manufacturing business in Canada, shared Durant's vision for Buick. In a historic move, Durant and McLaughlin forged a 15-year contract that would prove to be a game-changer. Their agreement allowed McLaughlin to build Buick powertrains at cost-plus pricing. This partnership, driven by a shared commitment to innovation and excellence, marked a significant milestone in Buick's journey. As the 20th century dawned, Buick was not merely an automobile manufacturer. It was a symbol of American ingenuity and resilience. Durant's unyielding determination and strategic genius had propelled Buick to the forefront of the industry. The roar of Buick engines and the sight of its elegant cars on the roads were becoming ubiquitous. Yet, this was just the beginning of Durant's ambitious odyssey.
September 16, 1908, marked a pivotal moment in the history of American industry. On this day, two visionaries, William C. Durant and R.S. McLaughlin, came together to lay the foundation for a revolution that would transform the automotive world. The stage was set, and the General Motors Holding Company was born. Their partnership went beyond business transactions. It was sealed with trust and a shared commitment to innovation. In a symbolic gesture, Durant exchanged a significant amount of Buick stock for an equivalent amount of McLaughlin's eponymous company stock. This act not only solidified their financial interdependence, but also made McLaughlin one of the largest shareholders in General Motors. Building upon the success of Buick, Durant envisioned the creation of a sprawling automobile empire. This empire would encompass multiple independent marks and subsidiary component-making companies, much like Durant Dort had done. November 12, 1908, witnessed another bold move as Durant purchased the Olds Motor Works, acquiring the venerable Oldsmobile brand. It was a strategic maneuver that further strengthened General Motors' position in the burgeoning automotive industry. The year 1908 was a whirlwind of acquisitions, consolidation, and expansion. Durant's vision knew no bounds as he brought together 13 car companies and 10 parts and accessories manufacturers under the umbrella of the new holding company. General Motors was no longer a single entity, but a conglomerate, a force to be reckoned with in the world of automobiles. In 1909, Durant's appetite for growth led General Motors to acquire Rapid Motors currently known as GMC. Cadillac, a marque synonymous with luxury and prestige. The acquisition of Oakland Motor Car, later to be replaced by Pontiac, further broadened the company's portfolio. General Motors didn't stop at cars. It also absorbed numerous parts manufacturing companies, paint and varnish manufacturers, and accessory producers. However, in the summer of 1910, the rapid pace of acquisition soon caught up with Durant and General Motors. The ambitious expansion had led to overextension, and the corporation found itself facing a severe cash shortage. In the midst of this financial turmoil, Durant was forced to step down from the company he had worked tirelessly to build.